Hi Super Funners! Today we are going to look at a collection of dinosaur minis including a Patasaurus, Brachiosaurus, Quetzalcoatlus, Spinosaurus, Velociraptor, Ancanosaurus, Amargosaurus, Taurosaurus, Leopluridon and Giganotosaurus. After looking at the dinosaur minis I'm going to match them up with a full size version of each dinosaur. This is a Patasaurus and lived during the late Jurassic period and was one of the largest land animals that ever existed. It could grow to 90 feet long and about 15 feet tall at the hips. It weighed roughly about 38 tons. Brachiosaurus lived during the middle to late Jurassic period. It was one of the tallest and largest dinosaurs. It had a long neck, small head with its nostrils on top of its head and a short thick tail. It was about 85 feet long and weighed up to 80 tons. Quetzalcoatlus was a flying reptile that lived during the late Cretaceous period. It was a carnivore and fed from freshwater ponds by gliding towards the water and sweeping up its meals with its long pointed toothless jaws. It had big hollow bones and was lightly built with a small body. Spinosaurus lived during the late Cretaceous period and lived in swampy areas covered in lush forests. Spinosaurus was a carnivore with huge teeth and powerful jaws. It most likely ate plant-eating dinosaurs and large fish. Spinosaurus may also have been a scavenger and a swimming hunter. Velociraptor lived during the late Cretaceous period. It was a fast-running, two-legged dinosaur. This meat-eater had about 80 very sharp curved teeth in a long flat snout. Some of the teeth were over an inch long. Ankylosaurus lived in the late Cretaceous period. Ankylosaurus was a prehistoric tank with oval plates protecting its whole body, except the underbelly. These plates and the two rows of spikes along its body, a horned head and a club-like tail protected it well from predators. Amargosaurus lived during the early Cretaceous period. It was a herbivore and grew to about 33 feet long and weighed roughly 5 tons. Its main food source was conifers. It would also have eaten ferns, mosses and any other available plant matter. Taurosaurus lived during the late Cretaceous period. It had an enormous horned skull that grew to 8 feet long. It had a large bony neck frill a short snout horn, two long eyebrow horns, a toothless beak and a short tail. Pterosaurs had four short legs with five toed feet. It was a large plant eating dinosaur. Pterosaurus hatched from eggs and may have lived in herds. Liopluridon was a pliosaur that lived during the late Jurassic period and was a mighty marine predator. It used its nose to smell distant prey underwater. It was a carnivore and ate fish, sea reptiles, squid, ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs and smaller pliosaurs. It would come to the surface to breathe. Giganotosaurus lived during the late Cretaceous period. It is the longest carnivorous dinosaur growing up to nearly 45 feet long and weighing about 8 tons. It stood 12 feet tall at the hips. It walked on two legs and had enormous jaws in a 6 foot long skull with 8 inch long serrated teeth. And here you can see all the different models you can collect. There's actually two different tubes and a very nice box to keep them in. 
and now just a quick close up and then we'll have a look at the full size models and compare them. This looks like Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus had lots of teeth, 26 teeth in each jaw, 52 altogether. It used its chisel-like teeth to graze the tops of the trees, swallowing food whole. Brachiosaurus walked on four legs. Notice that the front legs were longer than its hind legs. The longer front legs and its very long neck made Brachiosaurus look rather giraffe-like, reaching heights up to 50 feet tall. Each foot had five toes with a long sharp claw on the first toe of each front foot and claws on the first three toes of each rear foot. Its best defense was its size plus its clawed feet and whip-like tail and most predators were half its size. Giganotosaurus had dagger-like teeth with their serrated edges that could slice through flesh like a saw. It had three fingered hands with sharp claws, long legs and clawed feet. Its jaws were large enough to swallow a whole human adult. The skull is long and slender with corrugated areas on the edge of the snout top and above the eye. Giganotosaurus walked on two legs and could move quite well. Its slim pointed tail may have helped it to make quick turns and also acted as a counterbalance. Amargosaurus walked on four legs. Each foot had five toes, including a thumb claw. It had a small head, a long neck, and a very long tail. Notice it had two rows of spines growing along its backbone, along its neck, body, and tail. These spines may have had a covering of skin to form a double sail. The sail might have been to help regulate body temperature, or for attracting mates, and maybe even to make it look much larger than it was to predators. Without the sail, the spikes could have been used for protection. Leia Pleridon. Ah, we've got twins. It was a powerful swimmer and propelled itself with four large paddle-shaped limbs, the rear two being larger. Typical length was up to 23 feet long, weighing up to 1.7 tons. It had a four-foot skull and long jaws with rows of deadly needle-sharp teeth, which could grow to two and three-quarter inches long. These were arranged in a distinctive rosette at the end of its snout. Despite needing to breathe air, Lyopyridin spent its entire life at sea and was unable to leave the water. Consequently, it would have to give birth to its young alive and may have visited shallower waters to breed. In walking with dinosaurs and sea monsters, Lyopyridin was inaccurately depicted as being much bigger, about 82 feet long, but we know different today. Ankylosaurus grew to 20 feet long, 5 foot wide and 5 and a half feet tall at the hips, weighing around 3 to 4 tons. Ankylosaurus had 4 short legs. Notice the rear legs are larger than the front ones. A short neck and a wide skull with a tiny brain. It was a herbivore and had to eat a huge amount of plants that were close to the ground to sustain itself. It even had bony plates as eyelids. It would defend itself by swinging its club-like tail. Flipping it over was the only way to wound it. Apatosaurus. Its small head had a long skull, but was less than two feet long. The nostrils were on top of the head. 
It held its head 17 feet off the ground, which gave it protection from Allosaurus, who grew to 15 feet tall. And predators would have kept away from the scary whip-like tail and clawed feet. The vertebrae had a groove along the top. This held a strong ligament that supported the weight of the neck and tail, like the cables on a suspension bridge. The tail would counterbalance the head. The long neck was used to forage and poke into areas where it would not fit. Quetzalcoatlus. Even though it was very big, it probably only weighed about 300 pounds. It was a pterosaur. Its wingspan was nearly 36 feet wide. It was the largest flying animal ever found. Its wings were covered by a leathery membrane which stretched between its body, the top of its legs and its elongated fourth fingers, making a wing shape. It could fly long distances. Its neck was 10 feet long and its legs were over 7 feet in length, as was the long head. And here's the mini. This is Triceratops. Some scientists are saying that Triceratops is the younger version of Taurosaurus, but there is not enough conclusive evidence yet to support this theory. Other scientists agree they are two different species. As herbivores, they ate low-lying plants, conifers, ferns and palms using their tough toothless beak and using cheek teeth. Taurosaurus was a very large ceratopsian. It was up to 30 feet long and up to 7 feet tall at the hips, weighing up to 6 tons. It had the second largest skull of any animal, 8.5 feet long. There is one short horn above its parrot-like beak and two longer horns above its eyes. The brow horns pointed forward. Taurosaurus had a large bony frill with two oval-shaped holes growing from the back of its skull. This would have been covered with membrane and possibly used for mating displays or to frighten away possible predators. Velociraptor had three-fingered clawed hands and four-toed clawed feet. It may have been able to run up to about 40 miles per hour for short bursts and possibly jump. It had a three and a half inch long sickle-like retractable claw on the middle toe of each foot. This claw was its main weapon and could probably kill most of its prey easily by slashing and tearing it apart. Velociraptor was about five to six feet long and three feet tall. Spinosaurus was a large, fierce predator that could perhaps even kill large sauropods. It had numerous pressure sensors in its snout that helped it sense movement of prey in the water. A Spinosaurus could defend itself using its long sharp teeth, powerful jaws and clawed limbs. Spinosaurus walked on two or possibly four legs and could move quite fast. It grew to about 40 to 50 feet long and weighed four tons or more. It had a large head with long, sharp, non-serrated needle-like teeth and powerful crocodile-like jaws. Its arms were smaller than its legs but were larger than the arms of most other theropods. It may have gone on all fours at times. Spinosaurus may have been a good swimmer as it had paddle-like feet similar to water birds. Its distinctive shape with its sail-like fin made Spinosaurus easily recognisable. The spines could grow to five feet long and may have helped regulate body temperature or attract mates. Some scientists think the spines could have been part of a camel-like hump. I personally would like to think that the sail may have been brightly coloured, like the fins of some modern day reptiles. Spinosaurus was an advanced theropod whose intelligence was high among the dinosaurs. Thank you for watching Super Fun Reviews. Stay right on here for more great dinosaur videos. See you again soon. For more dinosaur videos, click the picture.